Robots, yeah. So Google's doing all these acquisitions of these robot companies, and no one really knows what they're going to do with it. At the same well, time cool. that they're working on this drop. Well, robots are cool. Robots are cool. Robots are silly, also. But but look at this one. That's actually not. That's the wrong video. That's my dog. Isn't that a cheetah? That's my dog bear. <laughs> no, that was my. You guys don't have dogs like that in New York. We don't. In Silicon Valley, oh. everyone has dogs like that. That's why we live in New York. All right, can, can, so. We don't know what Google's doing with these things, but it's very interesting. I think we might look at it as part of, as akin to what they're doing with their driverless cars. We don't know where this is going to fall into their business, which of course is advertising, not robotic dogs. Paul, Paul Staffel, let's bring you into this conversation. What do you think Google is going to do now that it appears to be consolidating the robotics business? Well, I mean, Google's taking a very long-term view on this because, uh, for example, the Boston Dynamics robots, uh, while they are plenty scary to see the videos, uh, they, they have serious issues about how you power them and the like. So I don't think you have to worry about having to, you know, on your next hike, clean up a hill as you're being chased by a Google robotic cheetah. Um, but Google takes a long view. Uh, think about the history of Street View. You know, it was launched, what, back in 2007, but they acquired uh, Keyhole uh, years earlier. Um, this is something where they're looking out a decade or more and uh, at, at, at bringing what, Paul, they're, they're out. Looking, they're looking out a decade, and what do they see? Why do they want to be in the robotics business? Well, let's focus on what we see today. So, uh, you know, these, these uh, scary robotic dogs will get lots of conversation around the dinner table at Christmas, but what we have today is robots slipping into our lives unnoticed all over the place. Uh, the first ones are in the air. Um, FAA's got a congressional mandate to allow robotic aircraft, unmanned aircraft, in our airspace by 2015. Um, and uh, so people are going to see these in the air. They're going to see already seen specialty robots that do narrow tasks. And if you look at what's going on with robots today, then just pull a string out 10 years, and what you see is this rapid increase in capability and function. By the time we get, you know, robust, scary-looking Google robots, everybody will shrug and say, well, what took you so long? Yeah, and I, th I think the thing that we like, I, Paul, I, God, I wish you could see some of the robots that we're running right now, but I think, you know, wh wh why we're interested in these things is the anthropomorphizing ones. Like, we don't think of the robots that are vacuum cleaners or whatever. We're looking at the, the ones that, that look like our dogs or our cheetahs or, our, well, I don't know if you have a cheetah, Paul. But, uh, uh, you know, that's the thing that gets the fascination. Are there true business cases being developed beyond drones and beyond moving things in factory floors? Oh, yeah. No, and, you know, while we're peering at the uh, anthropomorphic prototypes, um, the non-anthropomorphic ones are sneaking up to surprise us in the business space. So what today is robots that don't look like humans uh, are taking over narrowly defined tasks that are dangerous or boring and that humans don't particularly want to do. This is everything from, you know, the little machines that move papers and drugs around the hospitals to uh, robotic manufacturing. You know, Foxconn three years ago announced that it was going to have a million robots in the company by 2015. And uh, what they're doing is bringing in some very uninteresting looking robots that do lots of precise things that humans used to do. But like, what would they use, well, how would Google use them? As Corey mentioned earlier, Google's an advertising company. <laughs> yeah, Google's an advertising company in the same way that Amazon's a book company. Um, that, uh, you know, Google is about uh, uh, collecting information and turning that information to uh, useful purposes. Uh, plus, you know, we can only guess at what the other things are doing. Uh, and they're huge in, in robotic car development. Corey, Larry Page was supposed to be focusing Google in a way right. that Eric Schmidt as chairman right. wasn't able to. This doesn't feel like focus to me. Uh, I got to agree, and I, I, I do think it's interesting. I think that Paul's point about comparing this to the Keyhole acquisition. There's, there's this private company called Keyhole that was acquired by Google that became the basis of Google Earth. Well, what did that lead to? That led to Google having the best mapping uh, function out there of any of the companies that have been trying to do mapping stuff. 
Um, it's also important, remember, Google has this thing with their employees where they have 20% of their time they can spend on passion projects that might lead to something. And this may be, well, uh, sort of an outgrowth of that. Expensive passion. This is, it looks like an expensive passion thing. Indeed, we don't know what they paid for these acquisitions. But uh, right now, Google's throwing off a lot of cash and can do things like this. But you could imagine this is the kind of thing. And, and well, final thing, Larry has really shut down a lot of these other kinds of projects at the company, including a 180-person research facility in Australia that they just completely shut down, casting it, which means Australia is one of the hottest startup places in the country, in the world right now, because there are so many uh, freed Google people out there with some big ideas.